2024 coming to the Aaron Torres podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little black subscribe button at the bottom of your screen. Go ahead, click that black subscribe button. Really does help our audience grow. Really does help our channel grow. Really does help and mean more than you could possibly know. So go ahead, hit that little black subscribe button. Also, thank you to our presenting sponsor, Betfred Sportsbook and the Betfred Sportsbook app. Bet 50 on any game, get 250 in free bets. Thank you again to Betfred. Thank you again to you. Now, here is the video that you came here for. And so I bring it up because there's topics that I get to hit on and there's conversations that I get to have this time of year that I just would not be able to otherwise. And I get to answer a lot of the questions that I get asked throughout the year. And one of the questions that I get asked more than pretty much any other is, Torres, who do you believe is the best coach in college basketball right now? And if you had to do a ranking, Right now, this second of your best coaches, what would it be and why? And so what I want to do over the next few minutes is not so much give out my ranking because what happened this weekend is something interesting. I thought about this question. I was starting to put together my list and then I decided to put out the question on Twitter and got some very interesting responses. Got about 50 responses in total. And so what I want to do is go through my list, but also go through your guys and girls responses and kind of intermingle them to kind of put together the general who is the best coach in college basketball list. I will share mine, but I'll also share some of your comments as well. So let's get to the list. Number one, in my opinion, was a no-brainer, and it seems as though most of you agree. Number one, in my opinion, is Bill Self, and the overwhelming number of tweets that I got when I put this question out support that just about everybody believes Bill Self is the best coach in college basketball right now. Here are some responses that I got from you guys and girls. Jason, regular listener of the show, is a Kentucky fan, readily admitted. As much as I hate to say it, it's Bill Self. Allen said it's Bill Self, and I believe it's by a comfortable margin. Micah said Bill Self is killing it right now. And then we got another response that said it's probably Bill Self. Always has one of the best teams in the country, but when you look at his recruiting, he's not pulling in the talent Calipari is. He's got a great system and develops his players. And so really, most of your guys' and girls' response is very similar to how I feel about Bill Self. First of all, maybe more than anybody else in college basketball right now, he checks all three of those boxes. Regular season success, postseason success, NCAA tournament success, conference tournament success. You look at his regular season resume. I mean, it is unbelievable at this point. Obviously, the two national championships speak for themselves. I believe right now he and Patino are the only two coaches with multiple national championships. Billy Donovan, I guess, would count two. He's active, just not in college basketball. So you have the two national championships. But this is the stat that's kind of stunning. 17 Big 12 regular season titles. I mean, that is freaking insane when you think about it. What do you think about 17 Big 12 regular season titles all since 2005 or so, I believe, if my math is correct. That probably isn't right because that's like 18 years total. So he's got 17 regular season titles. And what's especially impressive about that is, again, the short window in which he's done it. For fun, I went back and looked it up. How about this? Coach K, who was at Duke for 42 years. Everybody considers him the GOAT. 13 regular season titles. Bill Self has 17 already, and he's obviously not done coaching. To me, though, what makes Bill Self the best, in my opinion, is exactly what that last tweet said. Always has one of the best teams in the country, but when you look at his recruiting, he's not pulling in the talent that others are. And that, to me, is the most interesting thing about Bill Self. I know I said last week, you know, Dan Hurley had some of those comments about Calipari, or, you know, I don't know if he said it about Calipari, but Dan Hurley had the comments, we don't just bring in one and dones, we develop guys, etc. And Bill Self is very much the same. You could argue Bill Self's most disappointing teams are when he has his highest ranked recruits. Didn't have success with Andrew Wiggins. Didn't have success with Kelly Oubre. Didn't have success uh, with Xavier Henry, if you remember that name, a top five prospect once upon a time. His best teams, two years ago, won a national championship. Best players, Christian Brown and Ochai Abaji, both late first round picks, both multi-year college players that were developed internally. Final four in 2012, Thomas Robinson was his best player. Third, fourth year college player who had redshirted at the time. National championship team. Best player was what? Probably Mario Chalmers, longtime NBA journeyman, but not a superstar, not a one and done, et cetera. Has had success with guys like Devontae Graham, Frank Mason, et cetera. 
And so to me, Bill Self is the easy answer. Consistent, excellent in the regular season, conference tournaments, NCAA tournament. And again, great eye for talent, great developer of talent. And it goes without saying. He's got Hunter Dickinson this year. He ain't slowing down anytime soon. The number two response, I would say on this list, and it was actually probably the number two on my list as well. It's going to be a little bit controversial, but I am going to say it anyway. Number two on this list is probably Mark Few, Gonzaga. And I already know people, well, he's never won a national championship and he plays in the easiest conference in college basketball and blah, 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 blah. Okay, let let me start by saying this. If you think Mark Few is overrated, at this point, I'm not going to convince you otherwise. What I would say, though, is yes, the conference is not, right now as we record, a power conference. The level play is not the same as the Big 12 or the Big East or the SEC or the ACC or whatever. But they do still schedule very toughly And they do win a lot of games against a lot of really good teams. Remember, it was last year in Spokane, smacked Kentucky around. Smacked Duke when they had Zion Williamson. I believe Duke only lost like two games that year or three games when Zion Williamson was fully healthy. Gonzaga was one of them. Um, You know, took care of North Carolina a few years ago when North Carolina came to the kennel. So you go on and on down the list. They play great competition in the regular season, have great success. And they have great postseason success as well. I know that the NCAA tournament isn't a be-all, end-all. But they are now, how about this? Eight straight NCAA tournaments making at least the second weekend of the NCAA tournament. So eight straight tournaments dating back to 2015. There was no tournament in 2020. And the last eight, they have made at least the Sweet 16. And they have made four Elite Eights over that stretch. Four Elite Eights. In the last eight years, two Final Fours, two national championship games, and I get it. They have not won the big one yet, but a couple things. One, just because you haven't won it yet doesn't mean you can't. And two, like we, we, we have to talk about mitigating factors here, right? 2021, they were dominant. They were by far the second best team in college basketball, and it just so happened that they ran into a juggernaut in Baylor who ended up winning the national championship. Maybe things go a little, you know, I I always say this. It's not an excuse. They're the second best team. Baylor was better. But how often do the two best teams even play in the championship game, let alone one versus two? Baylor dominates that. They deserve to win. I'd also add like 2020, when the tournament was canceled, Gonzaga was going to be a number one seed. I believe had a team good enough to win it. So Mark Few is very high on my list, very high on a lot of people's lists. I got a great tweet about Mark Few. He said, taking Gonzaga, this is from uh, a Gonzaga fan, taking Gonzaga to two Final Fours as a mid-major and building the most stable and consistent program outside of the Power Five in the last 20 years. Nobody has even come close. I agree with that. The only thought on Mark Few that is worth noting is this. Did he already miss his window for best best opportunities? Because it is worth noting, and I've talked about it on this show before. The talent level at Gonzaga has not been the same since Tommy Lloyd left a few years ago. Tommy Lloyd is obviously the current head coach at Arizona. Uh, That international pipeline has essentially dried up. Gonzaga will not have a single international player on their roster this year. I believe Arizona is going to have about five or six. And obviously, look, the talent level just isn't the same. So we'll see if Gonzaga can remain at that level. Good news is they did well in the portal. But Mark Few right now, I believe, deserves to be in the conversation, probably behind Bill Self right up there, number two, number three overall. I would say outside of Bill Self, in terms of number one. Now, a couple people listed their top three, four, five. Mark Few is in a lot of them. Number two, I would say that the the person that got the most first place votes outside of Bill Self, he's a guy that we're very familiar with on this podcast. We call him Big Rick Energy. Rick Pitino got a lot of votes at number one. Here's what Rick Burkhardt said. Rick Pitino, as long as Rick Pitino is coaching a college team, he's the best out there. Multiple people, one word answers. It's Pitino, Pitino this, Pitino that. But Rick Pitino got a lot of votes in that top number one spot. But besides Bill Self, like I said, I think he probably got the most votes. In terms of Rick Pitino, you know, listen, if you want to say he's the best coach in college basketball, I'm not going to argue with it. And it's a lot of the reason why I'm so excited to see him at St. John's. This is a guy that for literally 40 years, everywhere he goes, he wins and he wins big. 
The guy won at Providence. Remember, he took Providence to a Final Four. Built some of the greatest teams of the modern era at Kentucky. The 96 team is maybe the best college basketball team I've ever seen. 10 deep, destroyed just about everybody. Beat, ironically, John Calipari and UMass in the Final Four. Beat Syracuse in the title game. The 98 team. Rick Pitino leaves. They still make the title game. That, that's how good you know Rick Pitino had things rolling at Kentucky. 96 win the title. 97 national runners up. 98, they win it even after he's gone. Don't want to discredit Tubby Smith in any way, shape, or form. But it just shows you. Then he goes to the NBA, goes to Louisville, wins a national title there, sort of, that we can't acknowledge, but we know it happened. And I think it's worth noting. Got to Iona, and in three seasons, made two NCAA tournaments and won the league title all three times in the regular season. You give him any, like, he's probably the guy that if you just give him a program, a blank slate from scratch, from the beginning, and just say, next year we need to win a ton of games, He's probably number one on that list. So Rick Pitino gets a lot of votes. And again, this is why I'm so excited about what he's doing at St. John's. In one offseason, probably built a top 25 team. And I can't wait to see what he does in year two, year three, year four. Rick Pitino coming in with probably the most, the second most first place votes behind Bill Self. A couple other names that came up that I found interesting. One, we did get one very passionate vote for Tom Izzo. Breezy, who isn't a Michigan State fan, says Izzo has been successful forever. He always seems to make the most out of his potential of his teams, and he's still at his age where he's recruiting well. And oh, by the way, he's going to have a Final Four caliber team this year. Izzo's an interesting one because I do give him credit. He's been around essentially forever, and they really are still rolling. They're going to go into the season with a top 10 team, the Big Ten favorite, good enough to win a national championship. But he is also a guy that over the years, remember, his first Final Four was all the way back in 1999, okay? So he's had Final Four caliber teams for now close to 25 years. 99 was so long ago. In that Final Four, they played Elton Brand and Duke. Elton Brand now retired from the NBA. Rip Hamilton was in that Final Four. It was a long time ago. And so I bring it up because Izzo has been around forever. And the stats back it up as well. Eight Final Fours total. As recently as 2019, much like I said about Gonzaga, and it is worth noting about Kansas as well, Izzo had a team good enough to win it all in 2020 as well. That was the Cassius Winston team. Only thing I'd say about Izzo, last couple years have sort of been a struggle. 2020, uh, 2021, excuse me, that was the COVID bubble year, play-in game, lost in the the play-in to UCLA. Uh, 2022, lost in the second round to Duke. This year, they did make the Sweet 16, of course. But again, next year, we'll have a team good enough to win it. A couple other names that came up. Uh, I saw this one. I thought it was very interesting. I was a little surprised. But I actually had a few people make the case for John Calipari. And at first, I didn't know if it was sarcasm or mean-spirited or whatever. But a couple people did. Here was an interesting quote that that I thought was interesting. Somebody said, I'm going to say Cal, the entire point of college is to prepare you for your career. And the insinuation obviously is that nobody prepares NBA players better than Cal. And so what I'll say is there's a little bit of a anti-Cal narrative right now that's starting to kind of balance itself out, of course, because of the fact that the program is starting to get it back on its feet after a tough spring. I find that conversation really interesting though, because I know this is a very divisive conversation, right? Is a college basketball coach's job to win games for college or to develop his players as best as they can for real life? And in the case of Kentucky's players, it's for the NBA. Now, I still think it's to prepare players for college or or to win at the highest level of college. But you can argue that from about 2009 to 2019, nobody was better at developing NBA players while also winning at the college level than Kentucky. And I know it's easy to criticize the last few years, but I go back to what I've said pretty consistently the last month or so. 2022, they were a top 10 team all year. Number two seed was way up on St. Peter's, ended up losing in overtime. They beat St. Peter's. They're playing Murray State to go to the Sweet 16. And then from there, we see what happens. This past year, it was disappointment, but there was a lot of injuries. I'm not making excuses. These are just facts. Case and Wallace missed games. Jacob Toppin missed games. Oscar Shibway had surgery right before the season. So I don't think Cal can be number one, 
But I still think even at his advanced age, probably not as far down the list as, as people think. A couple votes for Calipari. Got a couple for Kelvin Sampson. Got a couple for Scott Drew. And in an interesting twist, we actually got a couple for Dan Hurley. I had a uh, uh, sidelines UConn, good, uh, somebody I know pretty well, said, the coach I want today and going forward is Dan Hurley. He killed it this season and is spitting hot as a recruiter. VT UConn fan club says, keep underestimating Hurley, folks. We like that. Don't think you can put Hurley at number one at this point, but he does bring up kind of an interesting second tier, right? It's who's number one right now. Is it Bill Self? Is it Mark Few? Is it Patino? But then, oh, by the way, if you start talking about who do I want over the next 10 years in college basketball, that's an interesting conversation. Is it Dan Hurley with the national championship? Is it Nate Oates with a pair of SEC titles? Is it Eric Musselman? Is it Tommy Lloyd at Arizona? I think you can make an argument for as well. Back-to-back Pac-12 tournament titles, all that good stuff. Maybe that's the conversation that we have next. Who do you want over the next 10 years? Is it Dan Hurley? Is it Nate Oates? Is it Lloyd? Is it Muss? Is it whoever? But right now, my top four in college basketball, I actually agree with most of the answers. Bill Self one, Patino two, Mark Few three. I would go Kelvin Sampson four. 